Exactly one year ago, I made a video on the Elegoo Saturn Beta 3D printer, and with the Elegoo Mars having been one of my favorite 3D printers up until that point, I was super excited to get my hands on essentially the bigger brother, and just the amount of projects and possibilities having that bigger build volume would open up, and in that video, I had stated that although this was a beta unit, in my opinion, it seemed like it was really close to being finished, and if there were any changes that were to be made, they would probably be very minor. Well, all it took was a couple of weeks and an announcement from Elegoo to realize just how wrong I was by saying that. Now, although looking at the Elegoo Saturn and comparing it to the Elegoo Saturn Beta physically, they're almost identical machines, but they made a ton of upgrades, especially in the LCD department. So in today's video, we are gonna take a look at the final release version of the Elegoo Saturn. We'll talk about the things that are different. We'll talk about what's included with the machine, how to set it up, what print quality looks like, and my final thoughts. But before we dive into that, I wanted to say a huge thank you to today's awesome video sponsor, Signum Workshop. They are an incredibly talented team of 3D modelers that put out mind-blowing fantasy miniatures for tabletop gaming. If you're looking for high-quality models to print, be sure to check out their Patreon, where they release a new series every month. They even have a higher tier that allows you to sell prints of their models. They shared some files with us from their upcoming April release, which is themed dwarfs and mountain monsters that I cannot wait to share with you. Links will be in the description to check out their Patreon and find out more. Now it has been some time since we've done any resin 3D printing on the channel, so I am really excited to dive right in. And without further ado, let's get right into today's video. For those of you that didn't see my initial video on the Elegoo Saturn from last year, the build volume is 192 by 120 by 200 millimeters. This is roughly three times wider than the build plate on the Elegoo Mars, which means that you'll be able to print much larger parts and be able to batch out parts a lot more at the same time. So if you're looking to print for production, if you're looking to print to sell, or if you're looking to print, you just got a lot of things you need for your project, this is an awesome machine because it has all that extra build volume. As far as looks go, the Elegoo Mars and the Elegoo Saturn side by side look incredibly similar to each other. On the front of the Saturn, there is a three and a half inch touchscreen, which has a very simple menu that'll allow you to home the printer, test your LCD screen, and of course, start and stop print jobs. On the back of the printer, you will find two fan ports to help with cooling the printer's LCD screen, an ethernet port to give you the option of transferring files from your computer directly to the Saturn, as well as the power input jack. Similar to the Mars 2 Pro, the build plate on this machine is aluminum that has been sandblasted, which gives it a very light texture, but that's supposed to help with the adhesion to the first layer of your printed part. The top of the build plate is slanted, so if any resin does happen to get on top of your build plate, it will just drip back down into the vat, which is really nice. This has definitely become a standard, or more of a standard, but that wasn't always the case. The whole entire build plate rides up and down on two linear rails, and it is very rigid. As far as the vat goes, it is an aluminum vat with FEP on the bottom, and it might seem like a small detail, but there is a max fill line, which is something that I love to see, so you don't have to worry about possibly pouring in too much resin and causing a big mess or damaging your printer. One thing people didn't like so much about the Elegoo Saturn Beta was the location of the USB port. On the original Elegoo Mars, the port was on the back of the machine, which made it difficult to find and kind of an inconvenience to have to constantly turn the machine and try to figure out where to plug in the flash drive. And on the Elegoo Saturn, they decided to move it to the front of the machine. However, it was right underneath the touchscreen on the front of the printer, making it where it kind of was inconvenient to use that touchscreen. And I could also see um, somebody possibly bumping it on accident and damaging the USB port. So I am happy to announce that on the final version of the Elegoo Saturn, they moved it to the right side of the machine. So it's really easy to access, but you don't have to worry about bumping it while walking by or having it be in the way of the LCD screen when you're trying to actually interface with the printer. Now the relocation of the USB port is nice and all, but it's not the main change that they made to the Elegoo Saturn. On the Elegoo Saturn Beta, the LCD screen that basically generates your image and determines what the resolution of your prints are gonna be was a 2K LCD screen. And people weren't very happy about this because the smaller Elegoo Mars also had a 2K LCD screen. So if you take a 2K LCD screen, make it larger, it's got the same pixels, but the density is not as tight, your resolution goes down. And so on the final version of the Saturn, just a couple weeks after I made that video, they announced that they were going to get rid of the 2K LCD screen and up it to a 4K LCD screen. And not only did they do that, but they made it a monochromatic LCD screen while the beta was just a standard LCD screen. This gives the Elegoo Saturn an XY resolution of roughly 50 microns. It also means that you'll be able to cure most layers within two to four seconds versus eight to 12 of a standard LCD screen. It also means that the life of this LCD 
screen is substantially longer and you can get up to 2000 hours, which is roughly four times longer than what you can get with a standard LCD screen. So this was a massive upgrade and to me really a game changer in terms of the Saturn and setting it apart from a lot of other machines that were available on the market. And around that time that the Saturn was launched, monochromatic LCD screens are becoming more and more common and more and more of a standard. So I definitely think that it was a good call on their part to go ahead and not only up it to 4K, but to also give you a monochrome LCD screen along with that. The Saturn showed up incredibly well packaged and was entirely encased in foam. Uh, there is no resin included with this printer, which is pretty common, it seems, on most resin printers that I test out. I don't know if it's a shipping thing, but if you do order one of these printers, make sure you either have resin or order some resin right away because you will be super disappointed to set this thing up and have to wait a few days for some resin to show up. As far as accessories go, there was no shortage, and in the box you'll find a flash drive, gloves, a metal scraper, a plastic scraper, funnels, measuring cup, masks, a toolkit, and instructions. Setup for the Elegoo Saturn is gonna be the exact same as just about any other LCD printer that I've ever shown on this channel, which is great because it'll take you about 15 minutes and you'll be off and printing. There was one thing though, so when you level the build plate on a resin printer, you're basically gonna remove the vat, attach the build plate, and then loosen the screws on the build plate so that way it can pivot left to right, um, front to back, and possibly up and down. And then you normally take a piece of printer paper, put it on the LCD screen, tell the machine to home itself, and that piece of paper is the correct gap you want between the build plate and the LCD screen. So you home it on top of that piece of paper, you tighten it, and then you should be good to go. However, on the Saturn, they include a thicker cardstock that they recommend using as the gap between the build plate and the LCD screen. I thought that it seemed weird, so I didn't do that. I actually used two thinner pieces of paper that I had because all my printer paper was gone. However, I highly recommend that you use that cardstock because when I used the kind of standard pieces of paper that I would normally use on an LCD based printer, the peeling and really um, peeling and sticking of the FEP was really aggressive. So. Um, they include that cardstock for a reason. Again, it seemed weird to me because based off of the instructions, it looked like they had a kind of thin standard piece of paper, yet they included this thick cardstock. So just make sure to use the included cardstock. It's there for a reason. It literally, I think, says leveling paper or leveling card on it. Um, and that was a lesson learned because again, it, although it did print fine, I could hear that it was just peeling uh, and sticking way too hard on the FEP using those thin pieces of paper. Once I had the build plate leveled, I went ahead and reinstalled the vat and poured in some resin. Because I haven't resin printed in quite some time, my resin supply is actually quite low, so I ended up ordering some Elegoo standard gray resin. I'll place links in the description if you want to order this exact same resin. I poured that in and then plugged in the flash drive to see if there were any pre-sliced files. They did have their standard, it's like a two rook uh, file that they include on almost every machine that Elegoo has ever released, probably since the beginning. Um, and I went ahead and hit print and it was crazy. I showed in real time just so you can see how fast, but the layers cure in that two to three seconds. So basically the build plate touches the vat. You see the image display for just a couple seconds and most of the printing time is actually just the releasing of the FEP and the dropping down of the build plate after every layer. So it's, it's just, again, the monochrome LCD screen is such a game changer for LCD printers. And I'm super, super happy that we are seeing this become a standard across really all of these desktop hobby level uh, resin 3D printers. Once the print was complete, I was ready to hop over to the computer and slice up some other files. It is included on the flash drive, but because I've used Chitubox before and I already had it installed, I went ahead and opened up Chitubox and luckily the Saturn is built into the software natively. So getting your printer up and running on the software side is as easy as clicking add printer, choosing the elegant Saturn and you are ready to rock and roll. Like I mentioned earlier, Signum Workshop did hook us up with a few models from their upcoming Patreon uh, for the month of April, so I was really excited to check those out. The first one I printed was an awesome steampunk style dwarf standing on the head of a mech. These files were in quite a few different pieces and I did reach out to them and was told that this was because they were given to me or an early release and that the final version will have both pre-supported options as well as non-pre-supported complete versions. Because how detailed these models were, at least on this first one, I wanted to scale it up so that way you could truly see all of the details that were in each of these parts. I scaled up the models 300% and I ended up hollowing out the mech head to try to save on a little bit of resin because it was a pretty solid piece. I also did my best to make it where all of the pegs that connected the parts of the character together were facing upright so that way there'd be no risk of them kind of deforming with the resin printer or not turning out exactly right because I wanted to make sure that they slotted into each other correctly. 
And once I was happy with the positioning of all the parts, I hopped over to the support section and um, I also gave them a raft so that way they would lift up off the bed and I used the default medium supports that are built into Chitu Box. The prints turned out absolutely insane with the exception of the mech head and the cape. Both of those, because they were kind of more flat pieces, actually tore off of the supports, which I'm gonna attribute to two things. The first is how I mentioned I used two thinner pieces of paper to uh, create the gap between the build plate and the LCD screen and they had included a thicker cardstock. So I heard how aggressive the peeling force was of the FEP and so uh, I think that was a huge uh, reasoning for why they came off. And then also I probably could have just beefed up the supports a little bit, especially on the mech head, which again was a fairly large part. So I ended up taking those two files, uh, re-leveling the build plate or not re-leveling, but at least changing the gap of the build plate and uh, beefing up the supports, printing those out again, and they both turned out perfect on the second run. Once cleaned up, I was able to remove all of the supports by hand, and I used my handy Bob Smith super glue, which I use pretty much for most uh, FDM and resin printed parts to glue them together. I can link you guys to that as well. It is fantastic super glue. Um, and I glued this model together. And the end result was absolutely insane. The level of detail that Signum Workshop was able to put into this model and that the Elegoo Saturn was able to capture is just mind blowing. And it's it's um, might not be every day that I actually do resin print, but every time I do, even though I've been resin printing for some years now, it still blows my mind at just the, the very intricate small features that these machines are able to uh, pick up. And again, being that it's got a 4K LCD screen, you are really able to see every single detail. Um, so in, in these complex models with all sorts of different textures and facial features, like having a resin printer is a must in my mind to be able to capture all of the uh, things that were created in the digital file of these models. Once this print was complete, I followed it up with two more prints also from Signum Workshop. One was of a dwarf riding on the back of an epic boar and one was of a super sweet dual axe wielding warrior woman. For the dwarf on the back of the boar, I went ahead and didn't scale it at all. I wanted to keep it at the same scale that the files were provided to me. And for the dual axe wielding woman, I think I scaled that up. It was either 150% or 200%, but I'm almost positive it was 150% because I just wanted to play around with some different sizes again to just see all the different details that I could pick up by uh, expanding on these really small models. Aside from character models, one thing I really love to print on resin printers are complex architectural models. So my mini factory does have a ton of either scanned models or just uh, recreated models of famous buildings or famous locations. So I hopped over there to see what I could find. I ended up finding a model of a famous Lutheran church in Germany that had amazing details. And so I knew I had to print it. I downloaded it into Chitty Box. I did hollow it out and I also rotated it a little bit just to break up some of the surface tension of having it, if I printed it upright, the flat base would create a lot of peel force on the FEP. So I did angle it a little bit and I hit print. The model turned out great with the exception of one of the four corners has, they, well, they all have very sharp points, but one of them um, I saw had broken off and I'm pretty convinced that that wasn't that way when I took it off the printer and that actually happened when I dropped it into my tub of IPA, but I can't, definitively say that, but I'm pretty sure that that's what happened is that because it was so fragile, I scraped it off the build plate into this uh, tub of alcohol. And if it just touched the top of that point, it would have broken. But other than that, the details were insane. The model turned out great. And again, the Saturn did a fantastic job of capturing all of those really intricate details. For my final print, I turned my attention to a model that I actually printed out last week on the Ender 3 V2, which was Godzilla from Chaos Cortec. I printed out a big blue version of him last week uh, in PLA. And so I figured this week, this is a very detailed model with a lot of texture. Let's scale him down to 30 or 40% and print him out and see what he looks like. And as you can see, the model turned out absolutely awesome as well. And big blue Godzilla now has a smaller gray I would say much nicer looking version, although the blue one's awesome. If you saw that video, there was a little bit of under extrusion or layer shift. So the uh, small version is really awesome and they look really sick side by side. If you wanna print out the Godzilla model or if you wanna print out the 
uh, the church or cathedral model that I found, I will place links down below so that way you can check those out as well. I mentioned a year ago when I did the initial review of the Beta Saturn that I was really happy with the machine and with the upgrades they did to the LCD screen making it 4K as well as monochromatic, I think this is a hell of a printer for the $500 price tag that they're asking for. This is definitely gonna be one of those machines that goes into my rotation with its baby brother, the, well, now the Elegoo Mars 2P. I had the standard Elegoo Mars that I was using primarily, but now I'm just about always using the 2P and this is gonna be a printer that I hold on to for a really long time and I am super excited to be using it for future projects. I was supposed to get the Elegoo Saturn a while back, but Elegoo did have some delays like many other companies and so it took them a while longer to get this machine out. As of the time of making this video, it still looks like Amazon is primarily out of stock and I don't really see many sources to where you can buy it at this very second, which is unfortunate. It was the same instance with the Elegoo Neptune 2 from a couple weeks ago. With that being said, Elegoo did let me know that they are working on resupplying many of their printers, and so hopefully it will be in stock sooner than later. Um, I will place links down below in the description to the Amazon page for this, and hopefully if you keep your eye on it, you can catch it in stock if this is something that you're wanting to order and add to your line of 3D printers or you know jump in and have just a larger form factor resin 3D printer uh, from the beginning. If you do have any questions about the Elegoo Saturn or anything that I did or did not cover, let me know in the comments down below. And if you've got a smaller resin 3D printer, maybe you've been eyeballing the Saturn, let me know what your thoughts are as well. I would love to hear them. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. I make a video every single week, so there is always fresh content coming your way. I, could, I, I say this often, but I want to say it again. I am incredibly thankful for everybody that comes back to the channel and watches and comments and likes and you know, all of those things, the channel has been growing rapidly. We just crossed 55,000 subscribers, which is absolutely insane. You guys are amazing. Um, if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I will place links down below in the description over to my Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. And a huge thank you to all of my current Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you. You guys are awesome and you allow me to spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for all of you to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace guys.